So this episode is all about our solar system setup. So we get loads of questions about how we run our off-grid solar, what kind of kits we use, um, what are the advantages and disadvantages of getting into the mains or using solar. So I'm just going to quickly run you through what we've got here in Ferguson Dome. So Ferguson Dome is all on a 12 volt system. We've got a kit which has the solar panels, a leisure battery and a charge controller that you can then charge um, devices and things from the USB. So if I take you through, basically this is the hub of it here. So this is the charge controller. We've got two USBs here so you can plug your uh, mobile phones or whatever into. Um, and then this all runs to um, switches which do the lighting in the toilet, the lighting in the dome. And then under here, mind the spiders, is the leisure battery. So this battery, I think last it has lasted about four years. Um, and then we had to change the one in the yurt because it just sort of died a death. Um, we also had an issue where a mouse decided to make a house on the top of one of the batteries, so that completely killed it, we had to get a new one. They're around about 120, 130 pounds each. So this works really well, because obviously we've got lights in here, and then we've also got a light in the toilet. We've got an electrician to wire up everything, so he put all, the, all this in properly, running from the solar panel. And then we've also got lighting into the dome. So what we've done is dug the cape, so the, you can see it comes out into the ducting here. And then we just literally ran it a trench under the ground, which then enabled us to do the lights in the dome. So you see how it comes up from the ground here and then up the trunking to the light switch. That carries on up to the lights, which we then fed up behind the insulation and have done a rope light around the whole thing. So this is a 12 volt rope light, which um, lights up the dome really well. So this is a kit from Bimble Solar, which cost around 500 pounds. So it has the solar panel um, and the battery, all the stuff you need basically, apart from the actual lighting itself. So this is perfect for an off-grid setup um, and you don't have to worry about any mains electric and then you don't have to worry about ongoing bills either. Next we're going to take you into Class Dome where we've done the full works with an inverter and everything and that's a different kettle of fish. So when it came to Class Dome we had the option of looking into bringing a mains electrical cable up from all the way down the bottom where the shed is. So it's about a 200 meter stretch but when we spoke to the electrician he said actually no that wouldn't be a really good idea because as you go such a far away you actually have to have a lot more loading coming through the cable and the cable that we'd have to get would be super fat to take that amount of electric current through it to get it up here without it degrading so we then looked into other options we thought about putting up a windmill and taking that because then you've got its power coming off the generator and in the end we settled for solar and we think solar is the right choice for what we've done what we wanted to do was to run a fridge off of it we wanted to be able to run lighting off of it and we wanted to be able to run our boiler off of it. It's just an LPG boiler but it still needs electric for the thermostat and for the igniter. So if you come with me we'll have a look at it. So this setup comprises of the three panels. Each panel is two meters tall by a meter wide and that then runs off into our box over here. In this box we've got four leisure batteries. I'd love to be able to tell you what size they are. We'll have to have a look when we open it up. And then inside as well, we've got an inverter, which then does our fridge in the kitchen, as, long, as well as our Rinai, which is over here. So this is our external boiler that runs off the LPG. And like I said, it still needs the electric. And then we've also got a 12 volt system that runs in the dome. So in the dome, the 12 volt system is running in the extractor fan, it's running all the lighting and the USB charges. So Brian built this box, um, especially to house all the batteries and everything. Um, so basically a cable runs from the solar panels underground to this box. Um, now obviously it's a right faff to get the thing off, so we don't just do this for anybody. This is especially for you lot, so you can have a look. So this particular setup in Class Dome cost us around £3,000 and that includes the, the mounting of the solar panels as well. Um, as the whole kit and caboodle of everything we needed for the solar and then obviously plus the electrician's cost. Um, so it is quite pricey but it does then mean you don't have any ongoing bills. So this is what is inside the box. Um, you may have seen the video where I got inside it to try and fix this whole box. Um, anyway so we've got 
four massive batteries. So these are about 50 kilos each, these batteries. So they what are, are they? They're humongous. That's so what the spec is. 230 amp hours each. So yeah, so... So what's this thing over here, bro? So that's your solar charger. So that brings, takes the power from the solar panels into here, and then from there it comes and it charges up the, the batteries. So that's all that the solar does. Some people think, oh, the solar actually runs straight into the system. No, it doesn't. It charges up the batteries and then from the batteries we come then into our fuse box which is charge controller the inverter uh, and the actual panels themselves and then we've got the 12 volt up there so we can isolate that in itself this here is our inverter the inverter obviously as the name says it inverts the power from the 12 volt dc up to 240 alternating current and then that does the kitchen and, and then the 12 volt system does the dome so yeah, it, it basically splices off just up here and there you can see there's the 12 volt system coming off over there and then this here is the 240 volt. You can see much bigger cable for the 240 volt stuff versus the 12 volt. But yeah, I didn't do this. <laughs> we have a mate who's an electrician and he did it for us. And thanks Richard. <laughs> yeah. So I, we definitely wouldn't have been confident to do this ourselves. Um, no. So we got a kit. So it was all in a kit, um, but even it was tricky for the electrician to figure it all out. So, um, but Bimble Solar are massively on hand. So if you need it, them, you just phone them and he will explain it all to you, which is brilliant. Um, so yeah, so this basically is the hub of it all. And then this then runs so that we've got power into the boiler. So this whole kitchen setup is the 240 volt, so there's the stuff for the boiler, that's the isolation switch, there's the fridge, so there's an actual normal plug socket behind here, but we've hidden it because we were just slightly concerned that if we had a bank of plugs on show in the kitchen, people would plug in hair dryers, straighteners, uh, all sorts of stuff, so we've decided to hide it behind and just plug the fridge in because we just didn't want people plugging in all sorts of stuff and then wasting all the power, basically. I'm sure we could take it, but we just were a bit concerned so um so obviously this the lights out here um for the outside they're all still on the 240 system um and there's the bath and then into the dome just goes the 12 volt so the dome has lighting and lighting in here and the extractor fan as well um so that's and and it has these little usb chargers so we've just put one on this side of the bed so that you can charge your device so that was our whistle stop tour of everything solar that we have here at tractors and cream if you well, have not quite because we've also got on each of the yurts we've got their own independent solar as well yeah so we basically got one uh, similar to the first dome of each structure yeah. um, which works really well um, so obviously if you have any questions about it then please let us know because and we will answer them as best as we possibly can if anyone's got any suggestions on what we can do for our next dome which this is going in you come I'll show you the progress that is being made so the, we've had the grounds work chap come in and put all the new sewage line and water line come in so exciting stuff it's coming over there you saw it here first folks so if you've got any ideas on what we can do differently for that in terms of electric whether we stick with solar or if you've got some other ideas we'd love to know let us know in the comments and yeah we will see you again soon <laughs>